The only difference you'll see in this type of system versus a conventional system is because you have one coil here and then this is your regular AC. Nothing changes on your AC. So this is traditional, been around forever, coil that goes to an outside condenser. It's a high efficiency, it's 16 sear. But because you have an extra coil in place, the static pressure uh, is a little higher. So you're going to, the, the blower motor runs at a little bit higher speed because it's got to overcome this coil and this other coil. So it runs at about 1600 CFMs which is not bad. If you're doing geothermal, you're probably running around 20, 2200 CFMs and you're getting a lot lower temperatures uh, and it's got to run constantly. So as far as this goes, there's no clicking, there's no real moving heart other than the fan. Other than that, it's relatively really quiet as far as operation, it's just the fan going. You don't hear clicking, you don't hear burners firing. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. It's a Hot water running through copper with the fan blowing it through your house. I mean, it, that's, that's how simple it is. So we're going to go ahead and close this up. I'm going to explain a little bit about the Ecobee thermostat. We're going to fire this up, let you hear it working. And then Billy's going to take some measurements of the, the water temperature coming in, the water temperature going out. And uh, we'll take the air temperature coming off the coil to just so you get a little bit idea of uh, the temperature of the air going through the vents. We're going to turn this back on to take actual temperatures when it's running. But basically, as we went over, you got your supply and you got your return. This water is set at 125, which I've done a low calculation on the house. Believe it or not, on this house, it told me to maintain 72 degrees and a, and a 10 below zero day with the, uh, the 20 mile an hour wind. I only needed, believe it or not, uh, 38,000 BTUs. Um, now there's 110,000 BTU 80% furnace in this house. I just went through a winter, it was one of the coldest winters. I had it set at 72. It never had a uh, uh, problem maintaining that whether I was coming in or out in it. So what that tells you is a lot of stuff in this area is way oversized. Okay, you do not need a blast furnace in your house. Um, this particular house has been upgraded and has been renovated a little bit. It's got new insulation, it's got newer windows. So. It's an older house, it's a brick Jordan, but the windows and the insulation that were all upgraded uh, when I was doing the work on the house before I moved in. So um, if, you, if you had an existing structure, if you didn't do the insulation or the windows, yes, you need more BTUs, but that's part of why you do a, a load calculation to figure out what you need. So based on those calculations, there's a sliding chart. It told me I needed 125 degree water. I had to take this hot water heater we have that's running the hot water through here will actually go up to 180 degrees. I know of another contractor who has this unit in his house and they has it set at 160 degrees. Now if you're going to run this at 160 degrees, anywhere above 130 degrees, remember this is also doing domestic hot water. So if, if you figure that your water temperature through here has to be above 130, you need to, put a, uh, uh, you need to have a plumber put a mixing valve on your domestic hot water side so you know you aren't scalding yourself when you uh, you know turn on the hot water to wash the dish so this particular one is 125 um, I like hotter water so that's fine for me as far as um, you know showers and washing dishes and all that and it's also supplying enough BTUs to the 125 supplying enough BTUs to, to, uh, to heat the house what they say with this is though, the key to this system is, is sizing it in such a way so that the return water temperature ends up being below 105 degrees. 107 degrees is the magic number on the return water. So what that means is, if you've got this set at 130, 125, and it bleeds off 30 degrees, then that means it's going to be 95 degree water that's going back into the... Um, into the uh, tankless hot water heater. The key to that is, is that's a condensing house, a hot water heater. If the water returning and the water that's being fed through there is above 107 degrees, it's not going to condense. It's going to heat your house fine. It's going to heat your water fine. And then basically, though, it's just an 80 percent, uh, you know, 80 to 86 uh, percent efficient hot water tank. So.